Good morning. I'm County Executive Steve Elman, and at the County Council meeting tonight, I'll be presenting the annual report required by our county charter. I want to take this time to speak directly to those of you present and our viewers at home about the state of the county. First and foremost, we are weathering the economic downturn that has affected governments at every level. Yes, our revenues from retail sales tax is off, but we are maintaining our essential services. No cuts have been made in public safety, the primary responsibility of government. Data from the Sheriff's Department shows that the overall crime rate in the county was actually down 25% in 2009, and violent crimes were down 12%. Law enforcement, courts, corrections, and emergency management account for 55% of county expenditures, and we consider that money untouchable when preparing the budget. While other governments have cut law enforcement expenditures, we don't consider that an option. In 2009, our sales tax revenue fell by 3.13%, causing a budget shortfall of more than $1 million. Fortunately, county officials in the past have always put money away for a rainy day and built up a healthy reserve. Our Director of Administration, Chuck Gross, has worked hard over the past two years with department directors to whittle down expenses. We reduced department budgets and discretionary programs, cut staff in proportion to reduce workloads, and consolidated several departments. All the while, our main consideration has been to maintain the level of those services of primary importance to residents, keeping those services intact while cutting back in some areas that were considered secondary allowed us to keep our tax rate the same as or lower than the year before. When taxpayers get their property tax bill, they need to be aware of a couple things. Even though reassessment has probably lowered your assessed valuation, you may not have seen much, if any, decrease in your bill. That's because many taxing districts, including schools, fire, library, and ambulance districts, chose to increase their rates, as allowed by law, to keep the same amount of your tax money flowing into their coffers. We didn't raise our property tax rate, even a nickel. In fact, we lowered it. In 2009, the average homeowner in the county paid 6.1% less in property taxes to St. Charles County government. The average homeowner paid just 56 cents in taxes to the county's general fund. So even though your property taxes may have been, say, $2,500 in 2009, the county's take was an average of just $84. We could have eased our budget crunch by raising property taxes, but that's not why we're elected to administer this government. If you have to live within your means, so do we. If that means our employees don't get raises, so be it. If that means elected officials go without raises, so be it. If that means we have to ask our employees to take voluntary furloughs without pay, so be it. We are going to provide the essential services of government and we're going to do it with the money that is available to us. We're not going to put our budget shortfalls on the backs of you, the taxpayers. How this will play out in the coming year remains to be seen, but sales tax revenue, which accounted for 56% of our general fund in 2009, is beginning to show some life after a dreadful start in January. Down 14% from budgeted levels for 2010 in January, by the end of February, we were only down 3.8%, in sales tax collections for the year. Hopefully that's a sign things will be picking up. If not, we will continue to downsize county government. Obviously, when you're setting priorities, you look at things like the family arena, which had a tough year in 2009. While we had just as many major events as the previous year, revenue was off by almost 30%. People did not have discretionary income to spend on entertainment events. To reduce overhead, we have not filled three positions at the family arena and are evaluating other ways to reduce overhead. County government never meant to get into the business of running this entertainment venue, which was to have been operated by a private entity and was to have featured minor league sports. The private entity soon folded and the last minor league franchise left last year. We've been talking to Lindawood University about the possibility of the college acquiring the family arena and using it as a home for their ever-growing athletic programs. Keeping the lid on taxes and providing essential services will remain our goals in 2010, but that's not all we're doing. We remain an active player in the region 
and we've been involved in several areas that should benefit all the residents of our county. Our Parks Department will celebrate its 10th anniversary this summer, and we now have 2,855 acres of parkland. In 2009, we acquired 182 acres of land in the, in the New Melly area, and our Parks Department will open the Heritage Museum later this year, which will give residents and visitors a chance to take a trip back in time in St. Charles County. The County Administration successfully coordinated efforts for a new emergency radio communication system mandated by federal authorities. Instead of each municipality, fire district, police agency and the county designing and buying their own equipment, the county will provide the service just as we provide dispatch and alarm services. My staff spearheaded an effort to coordinate with St. Louis County and Jefferson counties in the bidding process. These steps will result in savings to the taxpayers in all jurisdictions concerned. We've led the charge in challenging FEMA's new flood maps which designated hundreds of properties in the city of St. Charles and the county as within the 100-year floodplain for the first time. This map, if adopted, would cause unnecessary hardships for those property owners, requiring them to buy costly flood insurance and suffer loss in property value. My administration established a dedicated revenue pool under the county's transportation program to allow cities to apply for county road board funds for economic development projects. While I continue to oppose the use of tax increment financing for retail development, this type of economic development can be encouraged by using road board funds. And unlike TIF, the county government gets to decide how its revenue is spent. We have committed up to $3 million in road board funds as a 10% match for whatever MoDOT spends to improve dangerous state rural routes in the county. Putting shoulders on these roads and improving safety is the state's responsibility, but we want to get MoDOT moving on this now, so we're willing to help jumpstart the construction. The state needs to take advantage of our offer and get going on this now before someone else dies on dangerous highways like DD, which have no shoulders. My administration currently is working with all municipalities in the county to achieve an urban county designation under the Community Development Block Grant Program. This program has been around a long time and was developed to give local communities flexibility in how to spend federal funds. Unfortunately, taxpayers in the unincorporated parts of the county did not qualify. In order to achieve urban county status, the county needs the cooperation of one of the three largest cities to put the county over a 200,000 person threshold. An effort to work with St. Peter's on this had been pursued in the past but was unsuccessful. Now, thanks to the cooperation of St. Peter's Mayor Len Pagano, success is a possibility and taxpayers in unincorporated St. Charles County will no longer be second class citizens. We also have worked with St. Peter's in getting funding for two important transportation projects the Page Avenue extension, and the new Salt River Road north of Interstate 70. Funding now is in place to complete phase two of the Page Route 364 extension, all the way to Mid Rivers Mall Drive at Highway 94. And Salt River Road, in cooperation with St. Peter's, also is funded and construction is well underway. This new road will allow motorists to bypass the bottleneck at I-70 at Mid Rivers Mall Drive. In bringing back state and federal funds to help with these road projects, we're getting some of the money we all pay every day in gasoline taxes. So don't look at this as another federal handout. This is our money. On a regional level, the county is supporting the China Hub Initiative. We're partnering with St. Louis, St. Louis County, and Missouri officials in an attempt to get China to begin using Lambert International Airport as a Midwestern hub for air cargo and perhaps even passenger flights. The new airport director, Rhonda Ham Niebrugge, told the airport commission last week that a recent trip to China proved very beneficial. She said the China Hub Commission is now talking with four airlines in China, and a feasibility study should be completed by the end of August or early September. The director said getting two 747 flights in and out of Lambert per week is now the immediate goal, with the idea of going to four or five days of operation per week. Getting companies here to produce and send goods to China on the backhaul of this effort now is the challenge. 
In the end, this could be a tremendous boost to job growth throughout the metropolitan area, including St. Charles County. So that's a snapshot of where we were in 2009 and where we hope to go in 2010 and beyond. We've seen some important and new housing starts already this year, and we're confident when the 2010 census is completed, St. Charles County will officially exceed the city of St. Louis in population. And when the economy begins to improve, we will be ready to meet the challenges of growth. Thanks for your time, and here's hoping 2010 will be a better year for all of us. Thank you.